Since July 17th, the city of Zhengzhou in central China's Henan province has recorded the heaviest rainfall in 60 years in what has been called a once-in-the-lifetime event. What are the floods of this devastating uh, flood, the roots of these causes? And from China to Germany to parts of the United States, why are there so many deadly floods this summer? To find out more, I'm joined by Professor Joan Gung from the University of International Business and Economics, Wu Changhua, Executive Director of the Professional Association for China's Environment, and Mario Cavallo, CEO of M Communication and a senior fellow of Center for China and Globalization. So welcome to the show. Uh, John, I will start with you. I know you have been following the uh, development in Henan in Zhengzhou very closely. Uh, so what is the latest? What's the situation now? Well, let me give you a quick uh, summary. Um, well, we know that this rain was very, very heavy. Uh, uh, 200, over 200 millimeters within an hour. It caused massive damage. Uh, property damage as well as loss of life. Uh, in terms of loss of life, we know that the number five subway in Zhengzhou uh, was entirely uh, inundated. Uh, reportedly, 12 people have died from this, unfortunately. Um, and there are several uh, reports of government officials also died during their work, you know, which is uh, very unfortunate. And also, um, a lot of our focus was on a tunnel on a highway in Zhengzhou. Uh, t over 200 cars uh, were uh, stuck in the tunnel at the time. Uh, they were totally uh, flooded. Uh, but it came out uh, that uh, the news just came out that uh, the casualty was not as bad as we actually imagined. Uh, less than 10 people have died in, in all of this. Uh, so uh, uh, it was actually not that bad in my view. Mm -hmm. uh, so overall, as we can see, uh, even if in Zhengzhou, you know, the damage is just massive. Uh, we haven't know a lot about uh, what happened outside of Zhengzhou in the surrounding countryside. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that there's also massive damage as well. Yeah. So uh, this is a very grave situation. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Changhua, you know, as an expert on climate change, you know, uh, obviously this is a shocking news. I mean, for a lot of people, I guess. You know, what's your initial response when you see the rainfall basically in just the three days equals that amount of the entire year's uh, amount? Uh, so that's, that's, I would say, a lot of expectation for local officials, for local meteorologists, for a lot of people. Absolutely. It's devastating to see what has happened and also the, the casualties and the heavy losses of properties and assets. Uh, well, what it tells us is uh, the globe, our globe is warming. Uh, the temperature has continued to rise, uh, rise and we are about 1.2 degrees Celsius rising level already. And uh, warming definitely is causing extreme uh, weather events. And, uh, you know, there's scientifically, there's a saying, say, for every one degree Celsius temperature rise. And, uh, you know, uh, the extreme weather events actually rise two folds. And that's exactly what we're going. So uh, globally, I think, particularly for the northern hem hemisphere for this summer, uh, I think, it, you know, the, the extreme weather events in, you know, the flooding actually in China, in Europe and in some other parts of the world and also actually uh, along the co uh, Atlantic coastal lines is a devastating in a way uh, and, and the sense of urgency that somehow we need to uh, awake, wake from the disasters and trying to figure out actually whatever the systems we have already in terms of climate adaptation. Uh, we are not ready. We are not prepared actually to live through such kind of extreme weather events. And not only so mentally, psychologically, physically, and even financially, we're not really ready. And uh, so I think that's another wake up call for decision makers around the world to really accelerate their actions to fight climate change. Mm -hmm. Well, speak of uh, the preparedness, you know, in, in particular, uh, preparing to natural disaster. Uh, Mario, you know, there's, uh, I, I think there's, you know, the efforts of the city of Zhengzhou, um, they tried to build this sponge city with investment of 50 billion uh, in the story uh, quoted by BBC report saying that, uh, you know, uh, such an effort, uh, the sponge city somehow has failed. Uh, you know, uh, the, the myth has been broken, failed to respond to these uh, floods. Uh, what's your take on that? 
With respect to this idea of the massive investment that was put into Zhengzhou, and known again, known as this, as this, the Sponge City situation, and who's saying that it's a failure? You know, it's the Western media again taking every opportunity to paint things black when it comes to China, uh, and it's very disturbing. Um, as was just mentioned, this is this event, this situation is a wake-up call for the global leaders of the world with respect to climate change. That means media should not be looking at this as an opportunity to criticize. This afternoon also there was another article that I just read by CNN implying that while China was talking about Zhengzhou, the flooding, China wasn't talking about climate change as, uh, you know, as if to make think that China's irresponsible and doesn't care about climate change, yet here we are on the show with a guest speaking about climate change and of course China is a climate change leader. Even worse than that, we have the media, even in the face of tragedy, in the face of pandemic as well, which we're going to talk about later in the show, uh, painting China black at every turn. This is quite disgraceful. BBC even did it. I heard this, this afternoon another reporter from BBC saying that people were left to die. Can you imagine with, with the, the tragic and heroic rescue efforts that are, were needed, as was just mentioned? government official rescuers, even dying in the process of, of the rescue operations, and healthcare workers dying all over the world, not just in China, in their efforts uh, fighting the pandemic, and yet media still is pushing and pushing and pushing to create criticism and to politicize it. It's really quite disgraceful. That's what I make of it. It's so very unfortunate. Uh, uh, but the dawn, if you look at this uh, you know, situation in responding to this flooding, uh, you know, either in Henan, in Zhengzhou, uh, city of Zhengzhou, or in Germany, um, you know, the drainage system, I mean, in, in, in both places, I would say, is simply incapable of uh, uh, you know, dealing with such unprecedented rainfall, unprecedented flooding. Is that the case? Is there anything we can do you know, to better prepare? Well, uh, I, I totally agree with you that this is something that's very difficult to be prepared for. I mean, you're talking about a, like an event in 100 years, even more than that, a couple of hundred years. So the city is simply uh, not uh, able to prepare for a situation like this. And if it would be able to prepare for something like this, would, the cost would be exorbitant. So, so I think, you know, prevent flooding, it's just impossible, in my view, with this amount of rain. But I think uh, what one thing that city probably can do better is get themselves, um, you know, better prepared for that in terms of letting people know earlier. Uh, there's some discussion on the, on the social media about uh, the subway system, for example, could have uh, shut it down earlier. Uh, you know, I think these things probably uh, uh, the government can do a better job. Uh, so, so I think in hindsight, um, I think it's fair to say that uh, uh, you know there's always room to be uh, improved. Uh, it's desirable that government could have done this, could have done that. But you know, at the end of the day, we know that this is something just so massive, so unprecedented that it's probably very difficult for the government to do everything right. So I think we need to uh, give the benefit of the doubt to the, uh, the municipal government in terms of, I know they're very busy right now. Uh, I think the idea that you know, the, the rescue effort is, is not entirely devoted to that. The idea that you know, uh, it will let people die uh, because of uh, various reasons, is totally untrue in my view. Uh, I think the Chinese government you know, is always being very devoted to uh, mobilize all sources, including the PLA. I, they have sending the, the soldiers into the city uh, to, to rescue every life possible, uh, to minimize uh, property damage uh, to the extent possible. So I think, uh, uh, you know, even though there's uh, room to be improved, I, I think after this there will be investigations to uh, uh, to, to, to see you know, what had uh, gone wrong. And I'm pretty sure that if there is something wrong, and if there's somebody uh, should have done much, much better or somebody is negligent, I think the government will hold these people accountable. But at this point, I think we should give people the benefit of the doubt and just leave them alone, leave the city alone, and let them uh, rescue lives and, and, and dealing with the situation. I think that's mm -hmm. most Mario, important. Mario, want to jump in? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Mario, go ahead. You better want to jump in. Disaster. Disaster is not a moment to make unreasonable criticism and politicize. Look last year at the 
the, the disaster that happened in Texas with the plunging winter weather. There is no preparation for extremity. You cannot prepare for a tornado coming on your house. Look at Germany last, last week. There is no preparation for extremity. You cannot be prepared for that. It is not time to criticize and politicize. Those who are doing that have their agenda, and it's disgraceful. Mm -hmm.